Now that you understand dynamics and dynamic range, let's talk about what a compressor does at its core. A compressor is an audio processor that allows us to manipulate the dynamic range of an audio signal. Before we get into exactly how it does that and how we can control it, let's take a step back and talk about why we would even want to do that. Compressing an audio signal is one of the key tools we have as audio engineers. It allows us to level out the volume of a track so that the soft parts become more intelligible and the loud parts don't stick out too far from the rest of the mix. It also allows us to bring out a lot of detail in the audio. For example, a vocal can become so much more articulate, intelligible, and expressive when the right amount of compression is applied. Let's take a listen to a few examples of before and after we applied compression. Let's start with a vocal. Take a listen to this raw vocal with no compression. Saying goodbye is the hardest part. So in this example, the vocalist gets very loud on some words and very soft on other words, and all of the expressiveness would get lost when it's placed in a mix. Take a listen to that again as I play the uncompressed version. Listen to how some parts leap out and other parts get lost. Saying goodbye is the hardest part. Now I'm going to play the uncompressed version and then immediately after play the compressed version so you can hear the difference. Again, listen to how much smoother, fuller, and more expressive this vocal sounds. Saying goodbye is the hardest part. Saying goodbye is the hardest part. Also, notice how the soft parts are now just as loud as the loud parts, which will make it sit nicely in the mix. Take a listen to the uncompressed vocal within the context of a mix. You'll notice how it sticks out at times, and at other times it gets swallowed up by the rest of the instruments. Let's listen to the uncompressed version first, and then I'll play the compressed version. So you can hear for yourself how, by reducing the dynamic range of this vocal, we're helping it fit in the mix so much better. Let's take a look at another example of why we would use compression to get a fuller, bigger sound. Here we've got a drum bus. So this is all of the drums in one track. Let's take a listen to this uncompressed file. Great sounds going on there, but let's say we wanted to make it a little bigger. We wanted the snare and the kick and the hi-hat and, and everything to just glue together and sound a little bigger. We could use compression to achieve that. Take a listen as I start with the uncompressed version and then immediately flip to the compressed version. You'll be able to hear on the compressed version how all of the details, even the soft parts, are audible. They sound a lot punchier, a lot bigger, and just a lot more polished. That's what compression can do for us in this case. The detail, the soft parts, and the sustain of the drums are made louder, which gives us that bigger drum sound. Take another listen, starting with the uncompressed, and then I'll flip into the compressed version. So much more alive sounding. Notice that we're not over compressing here, we're just adding a little bit. It sounds so much bigger and so much punchier in a mix. Now let's take a listen to an entire mix. We've got two versions of this mix here. The first version has no compression applied anywhere in the mix. There's no compression on the overall mix, there's no compression on any of the tracks in the mix. This is a mix without any compression being used. We then have the same mix where we applied compression where it needed it. We applied some to the vocals, we applied some to the drums, and to the overall mix. 
you're going to hear the difference that compression makes on an overall track. Take a listen as I flip from the version with no compressors to the version where we used compressors throughout the mix. Especially listen for how things sound glued together, bigger and bolder. I just lose control. Every time that you smile, now we can't keep fighting. Cause when I'm all alone, I still hear all your words that we can't keep lighting. Fire after fire. Just as soon as we put one out, one pops up. You are in control. So you can hear with the uncompressed version, the vocal is very unstable. It sometimes leaps out and is way too loud. Other times it gets swallowed into the music. You can also hear how the drums don't hit very hard. Overall, it just sounds very separated, not glued together and cohesive. With the compressed version, where we have compression applied throughout the mix, you can hear how everything sits really nicely together. It's so much fuller, it's glued together, and it sounds like a cohesive, professional mix. This is the power of compression when you know how to use it. This is why we compress, in order to get this sound. Again, by compressing, you are reducing the dynamic range, and therefore evening out the volume of the audio so that the low-level material is as loud as the higher-level material. Take another listen as I flip between the uncompressed and the compressed versions, listening for all of those points, listening for how the vocal sits in, listening for how the drums hit, and listening for how everything sounds glued together. I just lose control Every time that you smile, now we can't keep fighting Cause when I'm all alone I still hear all your words that we can't keep lighting Fire after fire just as soon as we put one out, one pops up You are in control Let me love, take my love, get my love's invincible So a huge difference, that is why we compress. The compressed versions sound so much more alive when we apply the right compressor settings. So again, we apply compression for a variety of reasons. We apply it to make things sound bigger, punchier, or fatter. We apply it to bring out details in an audio source, making it more expressive. We apply it to control the dynamic range of a signal so that it sits better in the mix. You heard all of those things happen here with this example. Over the next few videos, I'm going to teach you all of the controls used on compressors. Once we have a solid understanding of the controls, I'm going to show you the techniques for getting the perfect compression for your tracks and show you when and when not to use compression.